Good afternoon. So, um, Pastor Reyes and Marian talked about what worship is and what worship is not. So, um, I'll be talking about living a life of worship. So, let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When I was younger, my view of worship was going to church once a week, um, singing songs of praise, listening to sermons, playing special music. But as I got older, and as my relationship with Jesus got deeper, I realized that worship should not be confined inside a church building, but should extend to our individual lives. Um, when we worship God, it gives us inner peace, and it brings us close to Him. So how do we, how do we worship God? So every morning, as soon as we wake up, we ask Him to renew our mind. Ask Him to change us from the inside out, so that we may be transformed into His own likeness. We should ask for patience, love, humility, kindness, and compassion towards others. We should live a life so that others will see Christ through our actions and words. If we turn to Matthew 5, chapter 16, and we read, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that there may be seen your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. One of my weaknesses is lack of patience everywhere, at work and at, most especially at home. So patience is always, I specifically pray for patience every day, it's included in my prayers. Um, I expect a lot from people, I want things to be done in the correct way, and if not, I get easily frustrated and my blood pressure runs really high. Um, so before I go to work, I say a prayer, because um, I don't want to start on any high blood med <laughs> pressure medications. Um, so one day I was working, in our rehab gym, and I was working with a difficult old, older woman, and she would say no to everything I say, and sometimes would just try to hit me and like leave me alone. And so I tried to gain my composure, and I was still kept on encourage, encouraging her, but I'm so close to just ending her session and sending her back to her room. So as I was working with her, there was this older guy who came up to me and said, where do you get your patience with us old grumpy folks? And I said, um, it is a job requirement. And then finally I smiled and I told him, um, the answer is prayer. I pray every day for God to give me patience and that's how I get to work with you guys. So he laughed and smiled and then he tapped me on the back and then he said, now I understand how you manage working in this environment. Um, another way we can worship God is through our obedience to Him. When we, whenever we obey God and His Word instead of our own thoughts and our own earthly desires, we give glory to Him. And this obedience to God is our response to the love, mercy, and grace that He freely gave to us. Um, we should strive to commune, commune with God throughout the day, every day. In this busy world, um, we get caught up with the daily demands of life. We have our responsibilities as parents, students, caregivers. It is hard to give time to God. And as we, and as we love technology, it can also distract us from communing with God. And I find it true to myself, because sometimes when I open Facebook and I start to read or I start playing games on my phone, I lose track of time and it's too late, and then I find myself having less and less time to meditate or read the Bible. So in conclusion, we should seek to live every moment of our lives in worship because it is the honor and our, and our life calling. <laughs>